Alright guys, when the killer is the first person to arrive at the murder scene. <clears throat> Let's check it out guys. Um, you know, I did see, uh, there, uh, I did actually watch a video similar to this. Or just exact same situation. But this is actually a different case. So let's check it out. What's wrong? Hi, what does it say there? Where are you at? Wagner? Okay, what? I don't even know. You don't know what's, what's going on? Man, this is chilling. Chilling to even see oh. it, man. Is he breathing? Oh my god. Mark, 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 no, is what? Is that your husband? My husband's freaking out, yes. Yeah, okay. I don't know what my daughter is. Oh, look, the man's gone outside! Ma'am. He's on the floor. There's blood everywhere. Dude, oh, it's so scary to, you know, just like come back on a normal day of work and something terrible like this happens, man. Oh my god, he yeah, has a gun going in the back of his head. Oh, what is your name? My name is Sherry Kinney. Sherry. You don't see a gun? No, I don't see a gun. Okay. Listen, I need you and your husband to back out of the residence and wait outside for the officers. Do you hear okay. me? All right. Dude. In May 2017, police in the small, quiet town of Bel Air, Ohio, find a man dead in his basement. Oh, it just looks like a blue a picture. A gunshot wound to the head. When police arrive on the scene, they meet with... What? With the title like that, are they the ones who did it, guys? The husband and wife that had found the deceased man. David Kinney and his wife Cherry are longtime friends of the victim. 43-year-old Brad McGarry. I can't believe that. How long you guys been Eight, nine years. Oh, yeah. My kids call him uncle. We supposed to go to the Bahamas with us in August. Best buds, aren't we? Yeah, he's one of my best friends. He met him coal mining class here years ago. Damn, bro, that's a tough job, man. We just took him and his family. I was trying not to freak out. I'm sorry. I can't help Guys, who do you think did it? The wife or the husband? Or is it just like somebody else is just gonna arrive? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. They they look like a, you know. Here's the whole plan. Okay. The breeder, the weed eater. Yes, sir. We come to the basement door and knock. Because my daughter knocked on the front door. I told her, I said, sis, go knock on the back door. She went up and knocked on the back door. Door was open. I went up right behind her. I noticed that the kitchen was scattered. There was stuff all over. I told my wife, I said, Cherry, something's wrong. When the police look in the basement, they find the body of Brad McGarry lying face down on the floor with a pool of blood. A Rick, bro. Wait, did they not go check in first? Around his head. I don't know. Brad McGarry was an openly gay man in a small conservative neighborhood. His friend. Hey, Mara, bro, I'm pretty scared. Okay, the, the, uh, we will take that off our checklist. We're not going to move into any uh, small conservative neighborhoods for sure. In state that he had just ended a relationship with a man named Scotty, but they didn't know his last name. While looking around the house, police noticed that it appears to have been ransacked. Oddly enough, they noticed that nothing has actually been taken. There were mo Dang, bro. Who who did this, man? Come on. Guys. <clears throat> Multiple newer phones lying around, a large TV, and even money on the floor. Seems so sketch. Is that a $2 bill? I think it is. Police are convinced that the robbery was staged. The next thought is that it was suicide. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when uh, she asked if there was a gun next to him. When the coroner arrives, he starts taking a look at Brad's body. It is apparent that there is a gunshot wound to the head, so he asks if there was a gun found anywhere, but no gun was found. 
You, even the even the 911 operator asked that. Since oftentimes suicide victims fall on top of the gun after committing the act, police roll the body over, but they still do not find a gun. I don't see a firearm. No, I didn't. They flipped him over, they didn't see a gun. And that's what Bro, this footage looks like it's from the 1990s, bro. You know what I mean? Kind of, is this body cam footage? What is this? That's the case. It wasn't no suicide. He's a rigger. It is, okay. Way different body cams than uh, what we're using in the States, if this is, is not in the States, which it might be. Uh, people outside. Detectives begin interviewing friends and family of Brad right away trying to form a timeline and gain as much information as possible as to who may have done this. After getting the f That's why I don't want to find a, a freaking body or anything, bro, because then I'm gonna have to be in there, like, freaking... being interviewed for, like, hours and hours, bro. Major inconvenience, man. I could be making YouTube videos during that time. Full name of Scotty Butler, Brad's recently ex-boyfriend. They head to his house right away to interrogate him. When detectives arrive at the house, his mother answers the door and states that Scotty has been in jail for the past three months for violating his probation. Scotty Butler is no longer a suspect as he had a solid alibi. Detectives decide to take a look around the neighborhood to see if there are any cameras filming towards Brad's house. Thankfully, one neighbor had a camera that faced towards the street near Brad. Thank goodness for ring cameras, right? We got like freaking, we got one in the garage area. We got one in the doorbell area. I think it does help uh, deter criminals for sure, man. House. They would be able to see who came and went from the house. While reviewing the camera footage, they continue to interview friends and family. David had taken some pictures and screenshots that could help detectives in the investigation. So they took his phone to copy the information. The issue the detective is having at this moment is that just the night before, Brad's cousin said something that completely changed the direction of the investigation. Sunday, we went to Grammy's. We were sitting around the table, it was just me and Brad and Heather, which is another cousin of mine, and he made a comment how this DJ guy, he was coming over. Brad's intent was it was romantic. He made a joke about taking a nap, and it wasn't taking a nap. It, he was insinuating that they were having sex. And so is the gay guy is coming on to somebody. Like quotation marks. This was Sunday. This was Sunday. Yeah, he was killed. He probably didn't like that. Yes. What time do you leave? Between 1.30 and 2. Really? Yes, he was That's supposed to. to heard that. He was dropping all the tuxes off. I also know that he was married. They've been married. Who told you that? Uh, Brad did. Brad told you? Yeah. She, being the wife, didn't know all this time. They've been doing this for years. From what I understand. Oh snap! It's an affair, guys. And the two of them. Right? She she has she has all the she's spilling all the the beans right here, man. And DJ <clears throat> kind of. I don't know if they laid low or they completely broke up. I guess they call him DJ or David Kenny. Really? Yes. The only guy. Is it's the only guy he's ever told me about? It's just it's the guy. That's him. Oh, That's him. The detectives made David believe they took his phone for the pictures he had. But the truth was, they were tracking where his phone was when Brad was murdered. Oh snap, bro, they're on to him, guys. As well as finding proof... The guy on the left reminds me of my ex. ...that him and Brad had a relationship beyond friends. When they took a look at his phone... Hey, brother. ...even though he... Oh, this is, this is a, little bit, a little bit back, because look at the phone, man. Definitely like a uh, Galaxy 7 kind of vibes or something. He has deleted everything. They are able to see the text messages between David and Brad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can hack into the phone and do that, guys. Evidence shows that they were, in fact, in a sexual relationship. They review the phone history and find that David's phone was directly at Brad's house at the time of the murder. They also dis... Uh, snap, bro. Guys... The way this interview, th this guy's pr presenting is, uh, this video is a lot different than, like, the body cam footage ones. And I, I do like it, I do like it. Gover, ...while reviewing the neighbor's CCTV footage, that David had driven to Brad's right before the murder in his wife's car, then left 40 minutes later. David with... And driving, driving wife's cars to do affairs, man? Oh, gosh. What, what, why, why? That's such a sneaky thing to do, man. 
I feel bad for the wife, bro. Now she's gonna know. She's gonna know about this as well, man. As well as losing him. Like, oh, wait. Not sure if that was. Uh, he's probably one though. Did that did it then? I'm sorry. Would then appear again hours later. Oh, he's, she, she's gonna lose him because he's gonna be in prison for so long. Later, in his truck with his family, delivering the weed eater Brad supposedly wanted to borrow. Yeah, just goes over there quite often to deliver weed eaters and stuff. Police know that David was there when Brad was killed. Now they need to work to get the truth out of David. Where's your phone putting you at Brad's house the time he got killed? Past three. I was not there when Brad was killed. You were at his house. Yes, sir. I remember. Oh, oh God. God. You know exactly when he was killed. Oh, well, bro. Look at him. Look at him. He's breaking down, guys. Yes, sir. I know. You were there when he was killed. No, sir. I was not at his house when that man was murdered. Yes, sir. I can't. This is the kind of shit that gets people. Look, uh, you can look at it. Look at his eyes, man. It, it looks like there's a little bit of remorse for what he did, bro. Good, good, good job by the the interviewer to get him to spill the beans, man. You guys see see what he was saying there. I don't know who he was. I don't know his name. I swear on everything. What happened next? He went in the garage. It's okay. Oh. Wait, is, this is the guy who did it, right? Doing this job for many years, the detective knows that people subconsciously hide their face when lying. Bro, see it? They're good at body language. <clears throat> Especially from police. You know, watching this stuff, you know, it's something we do when we're ashamed, guys. The police also know that Brad's SUV was still at the house and had not left since Brad was killed. So this version of David's story is a lie. Now, now, now he's ready to ask some more uh, pressing questions, I think, guys. We got to the house. Me and bro. I'm telling you the guy on the streets of the bar. There was another man there. Right. I, I swear to you, God, I do not know his name. I do not know his name. Right. He did kind of have one of the bit of a argument. Right. He was You know, the way he was confessing for a little, I thought he didn't do it, but I think he did do it, guys. The detective now creates a false story to help David become more comfortable with opening up about what happened. Even though the detective knows David will lie again, he also knows that the truth is getting closer.
Hey, bro. No, trying to get on his side again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like a, you know. It's still it's not gonna be char charges against him, but you know, trying to you know just convince him. Wow, an affair turned into something like this. Wow. I'm also going to scratch my... <laughs> Guys, what's a Derringer? Let me look it up. Oh. You're talking about a weapon. Look at me. Let it go. Tell me what happened next. He had it in his hand. Just kind of like waving at me, you know what I mean? Okay. Telling me, you know, you're up, I'm tired of you. I can't believe my emotions this long and just call it quits. He kept waving it at me, so I grabbed it. Okay. We could have left, but he decided to confront him like this, man. What happened after he grabbed it? I pushed him. Okay. Well, I saw. There we go, we have it. Case closed, guys. After this statement, David stops talking and asks for a lawyer. And even though he says he shot Brad, he will go to court pleading not guilty. In February 2018, David was two years for the court date, guys. Convicted of aggravated murder with a gun specification. If this man was able to do a assassin's job to someone he loved and his best friend, what could he do to his enemy? or someone who opposed him. Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court, although he made neither an admission nor did he offer an explanation. I want to apologize to the family for all the hurt. He looks so different, guys. I put you said pathetic, what? So, who, 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 did, who put that on the screen for the for him, bro? I mean, kind of true, though. I'm trying for any of this to happen, and I wish you could all, I could take it all back. I know all the apologies in the world will never bring him back. I'm sorry for it all. No, he's he's gonna he's gonna think a long time about how he just this one mistake is gonna keep him in jail for twenty plus years. The defendant shall serve life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus three years beyond life in prison. Prison records indicate that David remains incarcerated at the Belmont Correctional Institution in St. Clairsville, Ohio. Yeah, he's going to be there for a while, guys. Technically, the killer is the first to always arrive at the murder scene. That's true. Toss right. The fact he knew he was dead and still his daughter to go down looking for... I know, right? What is... Disgusting, bro. When that realized... The police officer I heard the cousin say that DJ was David Kenny. Kenny? He really is. He cracked the case. What, gold? Oh, very well put together video. Check out mind of, uh, the mind of a criminal in the description. Thank you for watching, guys. Much appreciated. On to 7,000 subscribers. Um, please consider donating below. See you guys next one.